Good evening. As tens of thousands across London watch America welcome its first black president, Barack Obama was sworn in less than an hour ago. To the sound of adulation, he pledged to meet his challenges one at a time. Starting today, we must pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and begin again the work of remaking America. And how did London feel watching history in the making? Everybody has a dream and I have a dream and I think that if you see someone like Barack Obama who is the first black president, it can, you can believe in yourself. We'll hear voices from across the capital tonight. And we'll bring you all our other top stories before 6.30. The so-called atomic guinea pigs begin their legal fight against the Ministry of Defence. It was a humble DIY job that turned into a work of art, and now the National Trust want to save it. Here in Camden, the nominations for the music industry's biggest awards, the Brits, takes place in just a few minutes' time. I'll be bringing you them before anyone else here live on London Tonight. So all eyes here and around the world are firmly fixed on Washington tonight. The 44th President of the United States has made history, becoming the first black man to hold the highest office in the land. And the people of London have watched him do it. Across the capital, parties and events have been hosted to celebrate this moment in history. A moment that inspires at home, just as it does in America. Well, just about now, the President is headed for Congress and a special lunch to celebrate his inauguration. His wife and his two young children were there to see him sworn in, along with the crowds of millions in Washington and an audience of a billion people around the world. In the last half an hour, Mr Obama finished his inauguration address, his first speech as president, and this is what he had to say. Our founding fathers faced with perils that we can scarcely imagine, drafted a charter to assure the rule of law and the rights of man, a charter expanded by the blood of generations. Those ideals still light the world, and we will not give them up for expedience's sake. And so, to all the other peoples and governments who are watching today, from the grandest capitals to the small village where my father was born, know that America is a friend of each nation and every man, woman, and child who seeks a future of peace and dignity. And we are ready to lead once more. Well, we mix there, as you notice, to the live pictures that you're watching at the moment, just at the very moment that President Barack Obama signed in as president, flanked there on the left in the blue tie by Joe Biden, his vice president, and on the right, I think it's Nancy Pelosi, who's the leader of the Senate. Anyway, he's literally, it's like a wedding. This is the <laughs> bit where they all go around the back and sign the uh, legally binding documents. That's Nancy Pelosi there on the left. Anyway. The job is done, and that man is now the 44th president of the United States of America. A real moment of history. Mm. Now, Ben Scotchbrook is at the Hard Rock Cafe, right in the heart of the capital tonight, joining with the crowds. What did they make of it? Well, Alastair, sadly, Washington, D.C., this is not. But let me tell you, the celebrations here have been every bit as passionate, as hearty as they were across the Atlantic. The tickets for this event sold out almost as soon as they went on sale. Britons and Americans abroad wanting to come together and say that they were here at least, if not there. And if you want to see just how excited, how happy people were here, at the very moment the page of history turned, we can show the reaction in this bar when Barack Obama finished swearing in as the 44th American president. <laughs> And there, in the thick of the celebrations, is my new best friend, John Dunn. Good evening to you. Good evening. Um, now, John is from San Diego. You've been living in America for six years. Been living you, here for six years. Living over here for six years. And uh, you said that you're particularly happy to be seeing this event in London. Why? Yes, it's, it's to see it from a different perspective and to see that everybody here embracing from all facets of life, uh, different cultures, backgrounds. It's something special that I, I never thought I'd ever see. 
Has it taken you by surprise that the party has been quite as uh, much fun? It's been very jubilant and very exciting and everybody is very, very lovely towards one another. And once again, it's, it's, it's the spirit in the air. It's, uh, you can't describe it. It's, it's nice to be around. All right, John, thank you very much for thank talking. I'll let you get back to your drink. Thank you very much. And, uh, of course, John's talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. And we can hear now a bit more of what London has got to say about America's new president. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. If you're an 11 or 12 year old growing up in Brixton in South London, and what I want to do this morning is talk a little bit about why this event today is important to all of us. Everybody has a dream and I have a dream and I think that if you see someone like Barack Obama who is the first black president, it can, you can believe in yourself. Um, Obama is a, a very, very good inspiration to me because first of all he is the black, first black president of um, the United States and wherever he came from and through the troubles of his years, he still became the president. Lots of people like in Brixton aren't, aren't, don't have very high self-esteem. They think we're looked kind of down on because of where we come from. But it can, like Barack Obama shows that whatever his, your background is, you can be successful. What message do you think you learned from today? That we can achieve anything we want to achieve. He says it is difficult for one man to tackle all these problems, um, but we'll see how he gets on in the first year. I hope he does well. Racial tensions will drop, everything will improve, I'm sure of that, absolutely. It's brilliant timing for there to be optimism about, you know, about America and the future because there's it's no doubt that the Western world needs a bit of help at the moment. So. I love the way he conducted his campaign and uh, if, if, if that's any indication of how he's going to be, conduct himself as president, it's going to be very, very good for the world. You get told things are historic without really necessarily feeling them, but this really is. Um, I remember uh, going to the grocery store with my grandmother, and uh, I used to always ask for everything inside of the grocery store, and I would say, Grand Grand, I want this or I want that. She's like, you'll get that when there's a black man president. I'm like, today is that day. <laughs> Well, just as uh, Barack Obama is starting his presidency today, so the parting here in London is just getting underway. There's going to be a lot of fun going on here tonight. There's going to be a very posh ball at the Royal Lancaster Hotel. There's a big musical concert over at the Indico at the O2. And a little bit of irony, bearing in mind that George W. Bush, the former President George W. Bush, is heading home to Texas. There's going to be a big party at the Texas Embassy Cantina just off to Fowler Square. They say that Americans do things bigger and better. I think that may be true when it comes to a few hangovers tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll have you reporting on that as well, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> well, all those Londoners are celebrating today's historic events. So how are you feeling about Barack Obama's inauguration and what does he represent to you? We just wondered if it inspired you to strive for more, like those young children we just heard in Ben's report. Maybe you believe, like so many in Washington today, that he can change the world that we live in. We would love to hear from you tonight. Email us or send us a text and we will read some of your thoughts out at the end of the programme.